It is Monday night all over again, and this is Zoom In on a Fresh Conversation. Tonight, our special guests are Tam, Jasmine, who will join us later, Angela, Jordan, Lavanda, Stacy, Angie, and Barty from Angie and Barty Productions. Thank you guys for being here this evening. I am certainly overwhelmed with you guys being on the show tonight. Oh, ladies, guys is such a standard thing that we say, but ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being on the show this evening. So tonight we are going to discuss your journeys, alopecia, alopecia awareness, and the bold, beautiful, and bald bazaar coming up in September. Zoom in on a fresh conversation is brought to you by Eilis Diamonds, LLC, brought to you again by Milton McCulloch, author of Love and Emancipation and host of Night Talk. Mr. McCulloch has been with the Fresh Book Festival for 10 years, as it has the author Angie B and her husband, author Barty, has been with the Fresh Book 10 years, at yeah. least. At least. At least 10 years they have been with us. So thank you very, very much. It's also sponsored by L.D. Robinson from Adero Press, who is our that good friend and publisher and all around person, yeah, her, his cousin, <laughs> who keeps us all on track with our books. And of course, the Fresh Book Festival, which is in January 2022. If you have any questions for the group, please leave them in the chat room. We will get to them at the end of the conversation. I want to let everybody know that this is being recorded. Um, that is something you have to do. People need to know that their faces are going to be all over the www. So thank you, ladies. Thank you for being here. Please take a moment to introduce yourselves. I'm going to call you by name. And Tam, if you would go first, just give us a little bit of information about you. Hi, everyone. My name is Tamara. Everyone calls me Tam. So please feel comfortable if you ever see me or, or talk to me to do the same. Um, I'm an alopecia. And, and so I am, I've been walking in my truth on my little journey for some years now. I don't want to get all into it. I don't know what all will be spoken about a little later on. Um, I do own a business. I'm a um, project management consultant and I work with different human service providers throughout the country. Um, they pretty much outsource different tasks and projects. And once more, I'm just glad to be here on this panel with a whole bunch of awesome, awesome women. Thank you. Up next will be Angela. You're on mute, Angela, I think. Where are you? I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Thank you all for having me. Ms. Donna, I appreciate you. Thank I you. appreciate you, Angie B. and Barty. Um, my name is Angela Cooper. I am an author and poet and got a whole bunch of stuff going on. I'm just glad to be here today. And um, thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Up next, Jordan. Uh, good evening, everyone. My good name evening. is my name is Ladwina Jordan, and I too am an alopecian. I uh, am a high school uh, social studies teacher and a mental health therapist uh, by trade, and I also run the Super Florida Alopecia Group. So, uh, thank you so much for having me on this platform this evening, and just looking forward to sharing information with some of my fellow alopecians because you ladies rock. All right, Lavanda, <laughs> Queen Lavanda, you on mute. I'm sorry. No problem. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Lavanda Williams. I too am an alopecia. I am the new Miss. 2021 Senior Diva of Jacksonville. I won July 24th. Yay! I didn't know it. It was, I wasn't ready, but but I'm ready. I um, make and create my own jewelry, uh, beaded jewelry. Um, I used to be into childcare for 18 years, I, and I just slowly got out of it. But my platform is alopecia awareness, and I am going to be a strong, strong, person out there to support all of us. 
So I'm glad to be here too. I'm glad I was invited. Thank you so much. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you for being here. Stacy. last but not least. Great evening, everyone. So excited about being here. And thank you again for the invitation. I am Queen Alopecia. I am the founder <laughs> and owner of the Alopecia Queen Movement. And I'm just very excited to be a part to spread more awareness of alopecia. Um, I am just excited to continue to be a face uh, for women, men, and children. And to also continue um, to show that we, we are all one when it comes to this and no one is alone. Thank you so much, Stacey. And this couple needs no introduction. Angie B and Barty, who are the owners and operators of the bold, beautiful, and beauty bazaar. Is that it? Bold, beautiful, and bold. And beauty bold. Bazaar. Yeah. You got it. Bazaar. And um, my friends for many, many years, please just take a moment to introduce yourselves to the audience. Uh, Donna, thank you so much. I, I like to tell people that when Barty was trying to court me, he said, I know a lady that does a book festival. If you come to Daytona, I'll introduce you to her. And so uh, thank you for that. Uh, no <laughs> I, I appreciate you and my husband for not only embracing my baldness when it was time for, you know, hot flashes kicked in and I was sick of this wig. And my husband said, you don't need it. And then the two of you helped us to develop the bold, beautiful and bald beauty bazaar. I, I am grateful because I, I would not have done any of it without you and without my hubby Barty. I appreciate, I appreciate you both. I'm gonna tell a very quick story oh, about this lovely woman <laughs> and her husband. We were um, going for uh, some grant money in the commission, right? And those people who don't know about alopecia or, 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 or just overlook it, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this woman with her boldness got up in front of the entire commission, took off her hat and took off her wig. And I was so proud of her. That was a moment that I will never forget because I mean, it actually just stunned the whole audience because until you understand it until you see it you don't appreciate what um, women go through when when you have uh, a condition as alopecia so anyway uh hats yeah. off to you i'll never forget that moment it was wonderful yeah so thank you thank you, thank you. i'm going to start with stacy this evening so when did you discover that you had and Excuse I'm me, new, Donna. Okay, um, I'm sorry. Are you here? I'm a new member in. Oh, she. What's her name? Hortensia. Hey, Hortensia. How are you doing? I'm good. Good to good. see you again. Good to see you again. You want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I did at the last meeting. I am a retired VA nurse. Okay. And um, an author. Mm -hmm. And um, I am a senior fitness instructor here in Ocala. And I am so glad to and happy, delighted to be part of such a wonderful group. I've had alopecia for 40 years now. Mm. And matter of fact, I'm due for a haircut. <laughs> so thank you all for inviting thank you. me. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And, and so are you are engaging in the questions with us? I'll be glad to engage if you want. Sure. Yeah. Okay, very good. So Stacy, you first. When did you discover that you had an autoimmune disease? And tell us which form of alopecia you have. Okay, so um, I have alopecia areata, which um, is an autoimmune disease, obviously, that attacks the white, your white blood cells attack the hair follicles, mistaking it for anything like a cold, a flu. Um, it's a little bit confused, but I'm actually very healthy. And I found out that I had it when I started losing the hair on my head at 19. Um, just a young girl, at, fresh out of high school and um, was getting her hair done regularly, standing appointment every week at that point. And I noticed that I, I was losing some hair at the crown. And then there was also a patch at the nape. And of course, the first thing I thought of was like, I gotta stop doing those freeze curl ponytails, okay? <laughs> and then- right. um, yeah, and then I need to be careful with curling the back when I would bump it in the back. So I'm thinking it was related to that. And it, and part of it was, but um, anyway, I just decided to, uh, you know, make an appointment to see a dermatologist. 
And at that time, like I said, I was a college student freshman year. And so paying that $50 copay was like, oh, you know, at that time. But I knew that I had to be responsible. And so at 19, the dermatologist told me exactly what it was. It sounded like a foreign language to me. And to be quite honest, I avoided it for years. I was 19. I was like, okay, I'll just keep wearing wigs and weaves. And um, it wasn't until um, years later, after having my first daughter, who's now 14, um, I lost a lot of hair then during what's called a postpartum alopecia, which happens to women hormonally after you have a baby. Um, that was the biggest scare. Um, and so that was the second diagnosis that I received. So yeah, 19 was the first one. And then the other one, I was about 26. Thank you so much, Stacey. LaVonda, same question. When did you discover that you had an autoimmune disease? And tell us which form of alopecia you have. I discovered it, I was about 29 and I have alopecia areata as well. The same format that Stacy has. It started at the top of the crown of my head. I had a, a size of a 50 cent piece. It started out that way. And, and I too said, hey, I gotta stop getting these braids. I can't keep getting braids. <laughs> I can't keep putting these ponytails on my head. But like she did as well, I, I blew it off and just kept getting my hair done. Then all of a sudden, uh, more spots developed. And then I started wearing the wigs. I bought wigs from everywhere, Japan, China, wherever they come from, I would style them and, and set them up. I had about 30 wigs in my closet. You couldn't tell me I wasn't who I was supposed to be on a certain day. <laughs> but then on March 18, 2018, I woke up and I saw one of the bold movements just happened to come up on my For You page. And I said, you know what? I'm done with this. I shaved it off, called my son's barber, and he just happened to be in the barbershop that day. And he took it off for me. And I went to Ulta, got all new makeup because I got a bald head and I got to be real cute with the bald head. So, <laughs> and, and the rest is history. And I love it. I love it. A lot of people think that it's, the first thing they think, oh, how long have you been sick? You know, that's the first thing they say. And usually I'll answer, you know what? I'm sick of the same question you ask me. I'm sick of asking me, am I sick? Um, I don't have that C. I have character, courage, charisma. That's my C that I have. So, and I, and I, and I just love me and I love my bald head. <laughs> ah, thank you, LaVonda. <laughs> Jordan, up next. When did you discover that you had an autoimmune disease? And tell us which form of alopecia you have. Um, I have alopecia areata, uh, just as the other two before me have spoken about. And I discovered it uh, probably I was a young teen, probably anywhere between the ages of 13 and 15. And, uh, and I didn't realize what it was. I, you know, played a lot of sports and had one of my, uh, teammates say, hey, you know, hey, what's going on in the top of your head? You know, I can see right down to your scalp. But of course, I didn't pay that really any any attention until latter years. Um, I, I went and got myself diagnosed probably um, maybe about 25, 30 years ago. I finally got a diagnosis uh, of alopecia areata. And now I've just kind of gotten over the hump. I became, I became totally bald. Um, I guess right around that time, about 25 or so years ago, I shaved it off and just kind of had to embrace my baldness. And I always felt as if I was walking this walk by myself. And uh, right now today, I'm so thankful to have met so many other uh, bald people uh, along this journey. So again, I thank you for the platform. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Angela. Hello. Hello. So... I started going bald, I want to say about um, 19, maybe about 2000. I had just gotten married in 97 and um, a couple years into my marriage, I started getting dry, brittle patches in the top of my hair and just itchy all the time and stuff. And I started going to my primary care physician which um, obviously was not a dermatologist. And he would just give me this FS shampoo. That's all I remember. 
about this shampoo and it would just dry it out even more. And so I stopped using it. And just from that point on, I started just camouflaging the area um, with wigs and weeds like, you know, everyone else. But um, it got so bad that um, it kind of became a nervous condition in my sleep. I would wake up with blood in my fingernails and on my pillowcases mm. from me scratching in my sleep, not aware. And so finally, uh, March 11th, my birthday, 2012, um, I went in the bathroom and I was just in deep thought about it. And I took the clippers and I cut my hair off and I came out the door and um, I looked at my family like, surprise. And my husband was like, it is what it is. So that's where this whole slogan of mine comes from. It is what it is. And it's just an acceptance of situations that we have no control over. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's where I'm at with it. I love myself. I like myself. And God loves me more. So I've just learned, you know, that some things in life, it is what it is. But um, the diagnosis that um, I got finally wasn't until last year. I went to a dermatologist here in Dallas and um, he diagnosed me with uh, folliculitis decalvins and it's hereditary mm -hmm. and the hair does not grow back. So that's what, you know, I'm dealing with it. And my dad has it and I think my brother has it as well. So it's, I'm seeing the pattern, you know, of it now. So it is what it is. I love that t-shirt. I love, I just love it. Thank you, Angela. Tam, you're up next. I'm setting the trend while well, going along with the trend. Um, I too have alopecia areata. And so um, my story begins, gosh, in, in 2009, um, same thing, a little coin of a spot and it grew and then it was other faces and, you know, wall full of wigs, weaves and all and so forth, trying to um, remain, you know, some level of normalcy. I am, um, in 2009, I did go in and get a biopsy done at a dermatologist, and, and that's when I was officially diagnosed. Um, it's something that I kind of knew was going to happen because hereditarily, my mom had it, my grandma had it, my aunt who's still living, she has it, and, but um, for me, mine started in my late 20s. There is it and started to their late 40s, early 50s. So it was like kind of a go figure kind of thing there. Um, in 2012, I kind of found a little confidence and kind of came out of my hair hats and, you know, shaved my head. And, and I did that for about a year. And, and um, it, was, it was a struggle. And I um, got defeated that round. And I went back undercover. And in 2019, it was just after my 39th birthday. And, and I used to have this this, these emotions where I couldn't look at myself in the mirror unless I had a piece of hair on my head, mm -hmm. you know? And so where, where I was in between getting the weave or sewing done or whatever, I um, would bypass the mirror, you know, put the makeup on once the hair is on kind of thing. And I really came to some levels of self-actualization was like, girl, you gotta stop. You know what I mean? You gotta get a grip. You, you gotta love you. And that's when it all took flight. And I am, I'm truly grateful like many of you are to have found my my um, my people. And um, I, I'm really grateful that I'm here to be with you all and talk about this journey that we all are on. Thank you so much, Tam. Is it Hortensia? It is, Okay. Yes. And let us yes. tell you, when, you, when did you discover that you had an autoimmune disease and tell us which form of alopecia you have? I have the same as all the ladies, but I also have an autoimmune disease, sarcoidosis. And it can affect any organs. And when I started, I started with lumps in my head. Mm -hmm. And my husband at the time, he would just like um, boils and he would try to scratch them out. You know how you get a, like a scab? So I started getting scabs in the middle of my head and he would scab them out or, or you know, scrape them out. So I went to a dermatologist and they did a, a biopsy. And... Um, it came back, then I started with the cough and I went to a um, pulmonologist and I was um, diagnosed with sarcoid. 
So yes, I have that autoimmune disease. And like I said, this happened um, almost 40 years ago. And it was quite frightening. The difference that um, Mrs. Lavanda was saying, I, and I mentioned this in our other meeting, when people ask me if it's chemo or cancer, I tell them it's the other C, it's called confidence. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I say that all the time because they automatically assume it's chemo or cancer. So I've been living with this now for a long time. I'll be 70 years old soon and it is what it is. And I am just so glad that I have a support group because you do think you're alone and then you meet these beautiful women and you say, you know, it's nothing like being in a support group. So that's my story. Thank you very much. If you think you hear a cricket, you do. I have a cricket that's been in my house for two days. I cannot find it. And it just, just loves being here. So if you think you hear a cricket, you do hear a cricket. <laughs> Angie B, tell us about your story. How did you discover uh, you had an autoimmune disease? And tell us which form of alopecia you had. I'm like everybody else, alopecia areata. Uh, I, but however, I am a black woman that had a black mama. So when I was a kid and my head would itch and flake and get those little boil, little pimple things, Mama would grab the plastic comb and part my hair and grease my scalp, which that's what black mamas did. She'd do that right before she sat me in front of the gas stove with the straightening comb coming out the flame. So <laughs> grease, straightening comb, pimples, Jesus, okay? So um, at the time she took me to a dermatologist and he was like, ma'am, you got to stop greasing this child's scalp. And so my mama took me straight up out of there because he ain't know nothing about being a black child with a black mama and hair. I always had short hair. Uh, it never, you know, was like uh, Whoopi Goldberg, never long, luxurious. I would put a shirt on my head and pretend like I had long, luxurious hair, never anything like that. As I got older, my grandmother would crack jokes about how she had long hair until my mama was born. And when my mama was born, my mama stole my grandmama's hair. So there was always some conversation in my family about some hair, okay, always. We knew daddy had a thing about don't cut your hair. Woman's supposed to have some hair. Don't, mm -mm, nothing about clipping no ends or nothing. He still deals with his wife. She, he will call the hairdresser and say, don't cut off no more than that, no more than that. So um, it, it was always something going on. However, uh, right after my children were born, I started realizing that um, the, the, the scratching was constant, just like you know some of y'all, the blood was under the nails, but then there was like a thin spot. I knew I could feel it, but you can't see back there. So you don't know, Jordan, you don't know when they could see straight through your scalp. <laughs> and so I had a wonderful hairdresser who was like, honey, I lived in Georgia. Honey, you got something going on up at the top, but I got this new thing called a glue-in weave. I'm gonna just put some up there. Don't worry, you ain't got to pay me for it. It's gonna look fabulous. And so now I speak to hairdressers. If you see something going on in their scalp, tell them. I know you're trying to sell the weave, but tell them too, because then we don't know when you go to take it out, if it was the weave that did it, we, we don't know. Hey. So. So then I, I turned 30 years old. I was sitting at my mother's kitchen table, a whole different episode of, of this show. Sitting at my mother's kitchen table and, and she said, honey, you have alopecia. I know because the dermatologist just diagnosed me with it. Now I realize grease in your scalp was, was not helping. That was called shedding. And that's your body's way of trying to get rid of this hair because your, your system is attacking the hair. So um, Barty can tell us about how I told him, you know, that I didn't have any hair, but the alopecia areata that I have has now evolved to alopecia universalis. I, I don't know if I'm ever saying that right, but that's where I don't have any eyelashes, no eyebrows. I'm in menopause, so I got a beard, but you, you know, um, the, a shave under here, maybe once a year at Christmas. I shaved my legs for my birthday this year. That was fun. But uh, what I have learned is that any form of hair loss, if your hair left a part of your body and came back a different way or didn't come back, that is a form of alopecia. And there are dozens of forms of uh, dozens. 
dozens. Um, and I think for women, it can be heartbreaking, but I don't know, I don't know what I would have done if my child had alopecia. And I think that's what we're doing in the support group now with Jordan. We're seeing three, four and five year olds that are shiny. We ain't talking short, they shiny. And parents can't send them to school with a baseball cap or with a wig. So, you know, all these different forms of alopecia, they may be the same, but they, they got the same struggle, same kind of struggle. And of course our handsome husband is bald by choice. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> and I had alopecia nervosa. So that's a nervous oh. condition. So um, I believe that's why my hair did come back. But it, it, it can go at any second because that's the way that works, right? So <clears throat> let's move on. Let me ask a question. Does sure. any of you, does your hair grow on the side and not the top? Because that's how my hair grows. The top, but all hair, if I let it grow, I can braid this part. It's just up here. Does yeah. that happen to anybody or is it just yes. all over? No, it yeah. does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. It does? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. In fact, oh, let me tell you, we just got on. back. <laughs> Hortensia, we just got back from our uh, anniversary vacation. And while we were there, Barty treated me to some henna. It was very nice. And so I have not been wanting to shave. It only lasts about a month or so, but I didn't want to shave because I didn't want to accelerate the removal. So Barty is walking behind me the other day and he's like, hey, baby, it's time for you to shave back there. You looking a little. <laughs> so yes, you, you ain't the only one. It's back here. It's on the sides. And of course, it's, it's down here. <laughs> this is a question that no, no one has to answer if they don't want to. But it's a question about your relationships. So I um, don't know whether you were in a relationship or you had a relationship or you're currently in a relationship. How did the coming out, how did that uh, conversation go? And I'll start with Stacy if you want to answer it, but you don't need to. Okay. I, um, well, I'll speak to another type of relationship. My relationship okay. with my children. I have two beautiful children. Okay. Um, I said I had a, I have a daughter. She'll be 15 next month. And then I have a son who's actually four. So a huge gap between the two beautiful children. And so I will say my daughter, um, she was the one that kind of knew about the alopecia um, sporadically. Like she, she knew, she knew that mom had hair and then um, there was a point in time where I did have, wore, wore a short crop cut. Um, and then it was uh, not until September the 11th, I'll never forget it, 9-11, um, 2019, I was on the onset of turning 40 and I just had enough. And so um, I knew that when she saw me then, she, it was going to be a shock because she, she was so used to seeing me um, at home with, you know, just a shortcut or whatever, but never out in public bald. And so I, when I went to pick her up from school, it was just more like, oh, wow, mom, you know, you good? You know, kind of like- <laughs> Everything <laughs> all right? <laughs> yeah, so I didn't know what was going on. And then I was like, well, you know, I just decided to just, you know, be bold and bald. And there was no conversation needed. You know, children look at you and they just see your face. And then she was like, I wonder how Carter's gonna think. And at the time my son was two, and we were on our way to pick him up from daycare. And he just, as soon as he saw me, all, he, all he's looking at is just my face and just gave me a hug as if nothing happened. And so that was the easiest for me is, is the children. They just literally, even though they, they, whatever comes out of their mouth is the truth. Um, they have no filter. Um, but I didn't have to deal with that. The children just, you know, embraced me and welcomed me. So that was the easiest part for me. So that's what I can speak to as far as relationships. Thank you so much. And Angela, you you kind of just told us what the t-shirt says it all, but was right. there, was were there any other challenges in your relationship when I was nervous mm -hmm. because like uh God, you finally blessed me with a husband <laughs> and I go losing my hair. You know, that played with my mind like right. he's so used to, you know. I'm, I'm fixing my hair and he always compliment me. He always just, baby, I love you with that hairstyle. Or I love you with that hairstyle. And in my mind, I'm like, 
he got his favorite hairstyle. He like me wearing. How's he gonna react to this? But the response that he gave was like, baby, it is what it is. I love you regardless. And we getting ready to celebrate 24 years this September of marriage, you know, but I have to be honest. It, it used to creep me out when he rubbed my bald head. <laughs> I didn't like that. <laughs> it took me a long time to get used to that, especially <laughs> if it wasn't a fresh shave day. And for him to touch my head, it's almost like touching my hair after I left the beauty shop. So now you can't do that, you know? So yeah, but other than that, um, I've learned to even get past that. But I was nervous initially at, you know, how he would respond, but he's an awesome man of God and that don't even phase him, you know? That's wonderful. Jordan. Well, I have to say that uh, because when the relationship that I was in during this particular time, they had seen me going through the changes, you know, and that is being ushered, you know, to the hairdresser, like, one o'clock in the morning and all of that tragedy and, and stress and embarrassment that I had been going through. So once I did, uh, once I did eventually shave it all off, it was a shock, but I think it was more of a, of a liberation for myself and, and, and my partner. Cause once they've seen you going through all of this stuff, it, it was, it was, it was tough. But the relationship as a whole did not suffer from it. And uh, it was a very supportive situation. Now, I will say, as to what Stacy said uh, with my daughter, and granted, she was with me all along the way. But when she initially saw that, she really nearly freaked out. And I don't know if it was because she was a little older. You know, she was like, like preteen or something like that. And I think at that time, she may have been thinking more about herself and her peers and what it would, what it would look like for her. So it did take her, it, it did take her a while, not a long time, but just to embrace it and come to a better understanding as to, you know, what it, what it all meant. So, um, so relationship wise, you know, it, it was kind of a, I don't know, it, it, it went okay, you know, but I'm here today to, to, support and bring my other family members along. And that's what I talk about even to my mother uh, because my mother, I just found out uh, probably about three years ago when we started the support group that she had alopecia because, you know, they, you know, kept their wigs on tight. You know, my father was a preacher and I never saw anything um, until I started the support group. And at that particular time, she let me know. So, but I told her at the time that I felt I had to do it for the family, you know, because if it happens to me, I have a daughter and I now have grandchildren. So somebody need to take the reins and go ahead and see what this thing is all about. Yes, thank you, uh, Jordan. My friend's daughter reacted, but her reaction was, I hope that doesn't happen to me when she's a preteen, right? So that was her reaction. Oh my God, what if this happens to me? So when they react like that, we have to think about, other things, not just ourselves, but the fact that, you know, they're freaking out because what if I wake up one morning and have to be bald at 14? So it's really, you know, sometimes it's a hard space to be in. Tam? Um, well, I had a different story. Okay. I um, I was in a very unhealthy marriage at the time, um, the onset of, of my alopecia and everything to that effect. Didn't have that support. Um, very hard and hurtful conversations had. And um, after so many years, I found the courage to walk away from it all. But um, I, I love hearing because I, I, I found in us having a support group and we talk about, you know, the support that you got from your relationship in, in, in an intimate way or so forth. Um, I love hearing that others were able to receive positive support, you know? And so it makes me hopeful considering I'm still a bachelorette now after <laughs> I lost that little lump of, of junk, right? Um, it makes me hopeful that, you know, the person that I do end up linking up with, my man of God, my my Boaz is gonna give me the same love and support as well. Especially since he's gonna meet me like this because uh, ain't no going back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much. LaVonda? Yes, ma'am. Just like Tam, I 
Ken uh, was in a marriage as well. And it went well for a while. And then you get upset, you know, you have your little tiffs every now and then. And then I was called out of my name and bald was part of it. Mm -hmm. And um, that didn't work for me either. So I just bowed out gracefully and moved on. But my children on the other side, I, my children are older. I have a 29 year old, a 31 year old and a 35 year old. And um, they were the best. Mom, you got a really nice head. You are so cute. I love it. And my son, who's 31, he's autistic. And he doesn't talk much. He's a functioning autistic. He has Asperger's syndrome. And then he's just such an angel. And he'll just, he just tapped, touched on me one day and said, Mom, you're beautiful. And I just got all emotional. And my granddaughter, she just loved to rub my head. Mama, you're gorgeous. Don't even worry about it. You're going to be fine. <laughs> And then from that point on, it's just, it's who I am. And I love it. Well, we can tell by the crown on your head that you, <laughs> okay. don't, have, you don't have any problem. <laughs> uh, Hortensia. Um, I've actually met two boyfriends in my years because of my hair. <laughs> and I think I mentioned before, I was in the bank and the guy said, you are beautiful. And you know, you, you're not used to hearing this because everybody had a comment about cancer or chemo. So it took me aback. And he said, anyone that could wear their hair like you and look as good as you, I wanna get to know them. So it was kind of a difference. <laughs> now, like um, the sister said, my daughter, I have a 48 year old daughter and a 44 year old daughter. They're starting to get their hair starting to thin. And my 48 year old said to me, if I can look like you with bald oh head, I don't care if my <laughs> hair fall out. So it, you know, it just helped. And when I met my husband, the hair didn't matter. You know, it didn't because I, I, I didn't wear wigs. I just decided it is what it is. And that's how we met. I mean, we broke up eventually, but it wasn't because of my hair. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> that's fabulous, Hortense. Yeah. Okay, Angie. I I have to let Barty tell this story because I I was defiant. I, I was serving the Lord with gladness and didn't want to submit to no man. And Barty comes along and he was, you know, he he's charming. And I was like, fine, I'll get rid of you. I'm just gonna show you these eyelashes come off and this wig come off. And you, there's the door. Just let me lock it behind you when you leave. <laughs> well, didn't happen <laughs> that all that way. But when she, we had a conversation one night uh, as we were dating, mm -hmm. and uh, like she said, she was uh, telling me about her uh, episodes with uh, uh, the mental uh, prospect of it, and also when she took off her wig. She showed me that she was bald, and mm -hmm. and to me, uh, I, I gave her the name China Baby. <laughs> she didn't have on glasses at that time, but she just looked like a China Baby. And so, rest history. It, it didn't matter to me, you know. It was her soul that I that I fell in love with. And they shaved together, which makes it very nice. Oh yeah. Yeah. Bertie has taught me over the years that. Men look at us and they know we wearing a wig. They just want to know why or what's under there or or what's the never. I, I remember my mother <laughs> wearing wearing wigs when I was a kid. And uh it, it was just something to do, like putting on a church hat. You know, I, I didn't realize the extent of it. And so um I I still was thinking once he saw that, you know, this wig wouldn't mind um but you really what do you say you have to be uh you have to know your worth mm. yeah but you know uh to each his own everybody comes out at a uh, different time they, you know when they feel like it so uh it, it's different for everybody you know so mm -hmm. for my wife and i uh it worked for us 
Everybody's journey is different. That's different. what we learn in, in, in Jordan's support group. Thank you whether, for that. Whether you're still wearing a wig or not, everybody's <clears throat> journey is different and you just need to be supported no matter where you are in the journey. I, I had it. some male friends that said to me when they met a woman and they put, you know, during that time and they put their hand in, in her hair thinking it was hair and they would bump up on different you know, the nets or whatever it is well, yeah. they put on the there. And, and and my male friends tell me that was a turn off. Hmm. So, you know, that's why I let them see who they're getting right away, you know? And um, yeah. That's much easier. Yeah, right? <laughs> and cost effective. <laughs> and cost effective. So did anybody go to therapy, Stacy? Um, no, I did not go to therapy for alopecia. I did go to therapy after um, my divorce, but no, not specifically for alopecia. LaVonda? No, ma'am. Anybody? No therapy. No. And and there's a lot of prayer. Here. Yeah, just a, talk, a few talks with Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Angie? I believe, yes. I, I stay in, in some kind of therapy, um, but... One, I, once I realized alopecia was hereditary in my family, I remember having a couple of therapy sessions just to say, what happens if, you know, how do I help my, my daughters if this happens to them? And uh, what my youngest daughter, Jasmine, has told me over the years is that she's proud of me for running around bald, but it's still a process for her. She, right. you know, she's like, okay, mom can do that, but I'm still, you know, loving these, these hair pieces and these wigs. And so the therapy for me wasn't as much, what do I do for me, but what do I do for somebody else? And I mm. think that's, that, that was the beginning of, of getting on this path to support group and the beauty bazaar. Yeah. Mm. So uh, the Washington Post says hair loss sufferers spend $3.5 billion to treat hair loss. Over the years, how much money do you think you've spent trying to be something that was inevitably not to be? LaVonda. <laughs> Including all my fabulous wigs? Oh my, um, oh wow, yes, that, that amount of money. I, I spent I spent some money, thousands of dollars. I, I'm pretty sure I did, yeah. I never decided to do any type of treatment, you know, as far as like the hair tonics that they have out there or anything like that, because I didn't want anything green or anything black to grow on my bald head. So I was too afraid to try any of it. I just left it like it was, but well, thousands of dollars I did spend on, on my on my wigs. I did because I Jordan. Okay, thank you, Lavonda. Jordan. Um, I don't even know if I could put a price tag on it, but I <laughs> definitely spent a lot of money. But it's just like Lavonda said. But it, it wasn't on any of the uh, new devices or things that may have been prescribed. But it's making sure that I got to that beautician every other week or every week because it was no such thing as a bad hair day so they got super rich off of me because i was a religious uh hair going we whatever you call that stuff i don't know what you call it wave wearing jerry curling it <laughs> you know so they got a lot of money so i i can i have contributed to that uh billions of dollars that has been spent angela um, I have spent like everybody else. I've made the beauty supply houses rich, but I almost, I went to Bosley hair replacement and I went through the little consultation. Oh, really? Yeah. And the, the amount of money they were talking about to create me a new scalp slash wig is all it was. I ran up out of her so fast. I'm like, if I give you this many thousands of dollars to make a wig that I can go to the beauty supply house and buy myself, you will know about it. No. 
So I did go to the consultation for Bosley Hair Restoration and wow. that was a double negative for me. I could do that myself for about $50 as opposed to what they were asking. And um, yeah, I had a lot of wigs and a lot of weaves and a lot. it was a lot of hair glue and money spent. Yeah, yeah. But Damn. I don't miss it. I do no, right. I'm it. sure. I'm sure there's extra money in your wallet, right? I don't miss um, it. At all. <laughs> you stay in Bosley just threw me a flashback, you know, and I went to the consultation as well. And they said, because by the time I went, I started getting patches in other areas. And so they said it was just, it wasn't even worth it. Um, but I was still trying to boggle my mind around the price as well. So God worked that out. Um, okay. But yeah, just like everybody else, wigs, because we had to switch it up. You know what I mean? I had a wig for when I work out with a ponytail. I had a wig for when I'm wearing a dress or with a gown. It's, you know, just wig yep. for when I'm wearing jeans, just weaves, sew-ins. Um, I, I got a bag now full of hair that I'm trying to find a good organization to give to. Because I'm like, look, Tim, you're not doing this no more, right? You good? You good? Let's, right. let's, get, it, let's get it out the house. Um, shampoos, uh, special greases, all of that. I, I Thousands, thousands, thousands. They kept me coming back for, for a while. To God mm. be the glory. You know, Donna, I remember my mom has uh, had alopecia. You know, she passed. Mm -hmm. And... I remember her borrowing $400 between me and my brother so she can buy a wig. Mm -hmm. So she was just spending money. And when she passed and we went in her closet to clean out bags and bags of wigs that wow. like, like you, Sister Jordan, she, she contributed to a lot of money because she would have them in all different colors and styles and in shapes and sizes, uh, it was crazy. I I did I um donated it to um a can the cancer society. Mm -hmm. All of her wigs. Angie, uh, I, I remember. Uh, well, I I did the electric shock therapy where they put the mm. the wooden stick in you between your teeth and tell you to bite down, and they shoot little. You know, I did that. I did creams, I did, uh, you know, I did all that. But I, I remember one time spending $80 on a wig. And I remember thinking that's almost my car payment at the time. I, I got to stop doing that. And so when Barty and I got married, there'd be two things uh, that were exciting for me on his payday. Yeah, I would buy the wig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, baby. Let's go see what kind of hair we can find. And that was just. <laughs> and I'm glad he got that money in his pocket now because you know we we can do other things with it but uh it 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 can be extremely expensive and I I, I gotta give a shout out to, to one of the show sponsors I gotta give a shout out to, to the Daryl Press yeah uh, the Daryl Press just published uh Confinement Chronicles our audiobook series from 2020 where we, uh, nearly 50 of us, shared stories about the pandemic. And in here, there's a whole chapter about the alopecia story. Mm. And uh, several women wrote their story. And a, a lot of them talked about how much money they had spent, uh, not just on wigs and treatments, but hats. And earrings, we feel like we bald, so we got to invest in some real good earrings, you know? Yeah, and, we need earrings. Yeah, well, yeah, Barty said we need earrings. Yeah, yeah we need earrings. <laughs> I raised my hand to that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Up, Barty. yeah. Gotta have yeah, my hey. earrings. <laughs> I don't want them thinking it was two of us in the car. <laughs> <laughs> got to get some earrings. So, um, well, uh, uh, you are silly. <laughs> yeah, he's a mess. He's a man. This young lady is a cosmetologist and she talked about how much money she spent on herself just trying to keep her clients happy because how you going to be bald and, and doing somebody else's hair. So we shift the money, not just to treatments, but um, jewelry, makeup. I, I, you know, I got henna on my eyebrows now that that costs a little, a little bit of something. And, and now they got the, 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 the tattoo eyebrows, um, 
got to have some blush and got to put it the you know and now um you know because of some of us live in florida and you know skin cancer now we got to invest in some good sunscreen. So I, I truly believe that number that you gave us, Donna, is, is really going to keep growing because if we're not spending it on hair or treatments, we spending it on something else as a result of, you know, that's, as a result that's of good, Angie. So y'all get this book now nah, because we, we got all sorts of folks in here and they sharing their story too. Confinement Chronicles, go to laderopress.com and get your copy today. Can you put it in the chat? Sure. sure. And so I only had to do cortisone shots. So, but that was, I don't know, weekly, right? Like 16 or 17 in your head. Wow. But yeah, so the journey is real. So I look at you beautiful women and I say, ah, you know, they don't have to wear curlers. They don't have to put grease on their hair. They don't have to do anything. But that's not true, right? You really have to take care of your scalp. So Stacy, tell us what your regimen is like. Um, it's really simple. I do start with a um, foam wash, a charcoal foam. It's really light. Um, and so I wash my scalp with that. And then I also um, use a scrub too. Um, I love how it feels on my head, you know? <laughs> In the beginning, it's so funny how you, when you first, express your how you want to be bald and you start living your life it's so funny how you can just jump in the shower wash your face and forget your head you know what I mean and so now it's like um choosing to take care of everything a part of your body so I recommend ladies if you haven't tried it uh, the head scrub is amazing it does it exfoliates the scalp it gets rid of all those dead skin um, so I do that and then the foam. And then I also just do um, an SPF uh, 70 um, just because, you know, the sun is just can bake your head literally. Um, and so I use that. And then sometimes I will use a, a moisturizer on it. I have dry skin naturally and I'm out the door. It doesn't take long. Um, every now and then, um, every other week I do uh, do a scalp mask, which is similar, like a facial. Oh. Right. Yeah. And it, it's, it's an avocado one. Um, it, you look funny because literally my whole, from my head all the way down to my neck, I look like a green lady, <laughs> but um, it really does wonders with um, keeping to me, I feel along with the exfoliating, it keeps the hair from stubbling early. So you don't have to shave as much in between. So I recommend that as well. Okay. That's good news. LaVonda. Um, yes, ma'am. I do use a scrub as well. I also... Tell um, us what kind. So that's good information for people because I didn't realize it was a charcoal to, scrub. I'm going to have to uh, get Go that. Get it. That's all right. Yes, because it's brand new. I just started. I just started mine yesterday. So, I mean, it is awesome. And um, I use also use black soap because I use black soap on my face because I have oily skin and my head and everything is oily. Everything is connected is oily. So the black soap kind of you know, uh, dries it out, but it, but it, it feels so good and it's easy to shave with. I get the black soap from uh, the flea market. Um, and also I use the shea butter as well to put on my scalp at night to, that's my kind of moisturizer. And I'll put a, put a little cap on at night too, to keep it uh, moisturized in the SPF 70 as well, because you need a higher degree in Florida. Right. With that sun. Yes, ma'am. All right. Angela question you go so, okay hold on, hold on, hold on. go ahead Hortensia I'm, go ahead. I have a question I've never shaved my hair I'm always going to the barber and paying them between 12 and 15 dollars no ma'am to, to cut it down but when she said shave so <laughs> you guys actually I've never shaved my hair it's always been the barbers so you guys shave your hair I'm learning well I'm so glad I'm with yeah. this group I'm learning a lot Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. Like yes, a razor? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Then you, you do it yourself? Not me. Yes, I do it myself. I, I do, do it with clippers. I do it myself. I'm actually part of like a shavers club, like a monthly shavers club. Mm -hmm. I, I, and it's, it's really economical. And I choose, you can... You can choose either the men product or the women shavers. I always choose the men because they have the six blade and it's better. Yeah. Uh, and they replace it every month. They have other products too, but 
Uh, I do it myself. I have clippers as well, but um, I only use those if I go a little bit longer. But due to my cycles of alopecia, I ha I'll have scarring if I wait too long of a mm -hmm. period before shaving again. And you're stuck with, okay, mm -hmm. either I let it grow to heal my scalp so that I can then shave it, or I shave it right away so I don't have to worry about those ingrown hairs and my scalp prickly, getting prickly. So yeah, I shave using a razor, six blade. Wow. Now, Hortensia, uh, Barty and I use Magic Shave, that old stinky stuff our dads used, but yeah. it do not stink no more. It comes in a tube, and uh, Barty comes home with bags of it, and I'm, it's like fun, but you, we just put it on and, and let it sit. You got to get used to it, because it can burn you like an old perm. You, you got mm -hmm. to, don't be scratching the day before you're going to yeah. shave. Uh, but that stuff, they even got a bald head formula. That stuff is crack for me. It's just, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I probably use it uh, twice a week and uh, twice a week. Yeah. Yeah. But it's good to know that you ladies use something on your scalp. I've been using, mm -hmm. uh, I use magic shave since I've been shaving, I guess 50 years now. And uh, I don't really take care of my scalp. I just, you know, once I shave, the gel that I use for my shower, I just put it on. I don't put on no sunscreen. I'm just God just blessing me. I'm just a big fool. See, you, you don't have to wear jewelry and, and, and blush and all that. Oh, that's that's okay, why. okay, okay. And, and, you, and you're blessed with some serious melanin. So that's a good exactly. thing. Um, I'm, yeah, yeah, because I don't put yes. anything on my head. But that's, I'm learning too. I might need to start doing that. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. it's just self-care. Right, it's just self care. Angela, you, hold on one second. Hold, hold on one second. So we're not talking about all the ones. Angela, come on, tell us about your process. So I too use Magic Shave, <laughs> and it's cracked for me <laughs> because if I don't have it, I go crazy. But in between, if because my hair grows really, really fast, so if I start feeling a little stubble, um, this is my go-to wet and dry. And it gets it clean, just like if I was using the Magic Shave. So I use this not only um, for my um, scalp, I use it for my chin as well, because I too get that beard. And when I tell you whether I use it wet or dry, I get a smooth, clean. I don't get the razor bumps and stuff anymore. This has been a life changer. What is it? Put it in the chat room. This is, is the Philips Norel code. It's the three prong, um, 5B actually is what it is. And also it has the little trimmers on the side. Also, if like for a man wants to shape up his beard or whatever, yeah. my husband actually uses it to line his beard and stuff up. And um, it's it was a good, it's a good investment. It's maybe about 50 bucks something like that. I think we pay for it. And I just keep it clean and, you know, rinse it every after every use. And the only other thing I use on my scalp, I rinse with clear water and I use like a vitamin E oil just to keep my scalp from drying. Other than that, I don't use anything else. Mm. All about to put my barber out of business. Right. Uh, no, I should say he, he's about to lose a customer. <laughs> Less than five dollars. Right, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm okay, paying Tam. up to twenty dollars. Okay. Damn. <laughs> Tell us your process. You're on mute. I'm sorry, I'm here laughing and giggling. Um, I love that we all do something a little different. I right. use my clippers. Um, I like my stubble. And so um, I can go up to two days with, um, without having to shave. And um, in between, with regards to um, shampooing, I, I do um, the black soap when I um, haven't shaved. Um, when I do shave, I have this shampoo and it's, it's, it's some kind of Versace something. It's talking about how we offset what we're spending money on. It costs me a pretty penny, but all I need is just a penny of it. And it's, it's lasts me almost a year now. Um, but I do that after every shave. Um, vitamin E, vitamin D oil, I, I go ahead, I put that on and keep it moving. I've become a big investor in hats, but um, I do use sunscreen as well with regards to protecting the dome. Um, but yeah, Miss Hortensia, you better stop giving them people your money. Believe me, <laughs> we just I gave got an appointment this week. I'm about to cancel, get rid of all this. 
<laughs> you got three ways you can get it done on the cheap. Exactly. Jordan. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. I know I'm I'm like you, uh, Miss Hortensia. Thank you guys. I might have to I might have to step up my game a little bit. You, <laughs> Me too. You, you, <laughs> yeah, I'm missing something because I use a Mark Three and uh, some a uh, uh, Vino uh, shaving cream, and that's a pretty much oh shea butter, and that's it. So when I do have to shave, probably if I go three days, that's that's three too many. So. Uh, uh, a, a day and a half, pretty much. That's what that's what I need to do to keep it where it needs to be. Uh, because I think someone else said, uh, if I don't shave it, you get that uh, ingrown hair, and then that starts hurting. So I have to get it uh, ahead of that uh, to make sure that it stays nice and smooth. And like at Barty, I heard you over there, buddy. So th this dome is shining, and it's just it's a gift from God, is what I call it. I hear you. I natural, mean. baby, natural. I feel All you. natural. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and and, I, and 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 no blush or nothing. Y'all see me? There you I go. Know. There you <laughs> go. Smooth. <laughs> the baby's smooth. Mm. Well, see, now you've learned something from each other because everybody's yeah, kind of yeah, using yeah. something different. So that's really nice, right? Can I chime in, Donna? I'm sorry, I didn't. I did pick you, right? You just, yes, ma'am. I, I wanted to start with what ahead. she was saying. Um. I, when she talked about it's a gift from God, I was uh, going down an escalator one day in the mall and the uh, loss prevention officer was behind me and she noticed, uh, you know, my my spot and everything because it's discolored. And um, she said, can I say something to you? I say, sure. She said, um, that is so beautiful. It looks like a, a, a map or something. And I was like, you, uh, how did she say it? Uh, oh, it, she said it looked like something pertaining to art, like a perfect uh, painting or something. She said is what she said. And I was saying, well, I am one of God's masterpieces. And she was like, you know, that that's that's awesome that you look at it like that. Mm -hmm. I was like, it, you know, it is, you know, the scarring and stuff, because I used to be ashamed of it. I, I didn't want people to stand behind me. I was like, are they looking at my spot? You know, it's, you know, cause I got one in the lower part, a little round part um, that Stacy was talking about. And then I got the big area, you know, that, mm -hmm. that covers. So every, you know, it's, it was, it was kind of sketchy for me initially, you know, I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable with people. If I went to the movie theaters and stuff and people sitting behind me and, you know, that kind of stuff or at the grocery store in the line, I'm like, I wonder what they thinking like about this, but huh, I am so delivered from people and I have learned to accept all of me and I am God's uh, work of art and it is what it is. <laughs> you know, you should just tell them, you should just tell them that's your hot spot. Don't touch it. You... <laughs> Something might happen. So just leave that alone. So Dwana, I'm real. still telling your story from last meeting. Remember the story you said where the lady followed you in the bathroom? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Made, made my absolute day. It was almost like being a boxer match. I got over there in the rings in the bathroom. She kept, sir, sir, sir. You know, and, and I got it. It was just on the she and I in that bathroom. Oh, bloop. Yeah, what do you think? <laughs> you threw it up on the joint. Oh, bloop. <laughs> like a badge of... Like a badge of honor, like yes, we we winning out here. We winning in this game. Uh, yes, I told I told my daughter that story. She was cracking up. I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, you know, yeah, I got what you got. Now what? <laughs> now, yeah, now what? I, really, I didn't really have to say nothing. That went blue. Oh yeah, she. I never saw her again. Okay, oh, thank you. Now, hey, uh, how do people say? How do people say? Run tell that. Yeah, run tell that. Run tell that. <laughs> Oh, Jordan, that's now let me go to the bathroom. I'm gonna remember that. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I told my daughter she was yeah. laughing. Oh, yes, that was funny. But you know what? An hour is not long enough, and we're going past the nine o'clock hour. But I need to to kind of wrap it up. I, I knew I couldn't get to all these questions, but, you know, <laughs> but I thought I'd put them on the paper anyway. I want Angie quickly to tell us about the bazaar, ladies. I want you to think about. Um, if you have a product that you're selling, a business that you're in, please share it with us. And then I need a pearl of wisdom from you at the end. Okay, so Angie, it's on you. 
Now, Donna, I, I appreciate uh, Jordan. She's coming back to be a model at the Beauty Bazaar. She's even got her bow tie sponsor. So thank you. Shout out, shout out. Um, I want to thank LaVonda. She has uh, been LaVonda's beads uh, a vendor with us and apologize. She, could, she can't be a vendor this year because she's going to make a, a royal appearance. Uh, LaVonda won that pageant and it wasn't an alopecia pageant. It was just a pageant for women and she right. won. And so I'm that I love it. I love it. Tam has been a model. She's on the fence. I'm trying to push her off the fence so she can return. What? But thank you. Don't tell Barty. But Tam is the legislative liaison with the National Alopecia Areata Foundation. She's the one that's helping insurance companies understand that they need to be paying for these treatments. Yes. They need to be paying for, for these gigs. They, they need to be paying for the counseling, the therapy. So thank you, Tam. Uh, Angela Cooper is bringing Sam this year from Texas. She's going to be yes. a vendor. <laughs> and I need her to meet Donna so she can register for the, the 2021 Fresh Book Festival. Uh, when we were on tour this year, and we went to Texas. Uh, uh, Angela was one of the models because everywhere we go, we do a little bit of alopecia awareness. And she came, I mean, y'all got to follow her page between the eyelashes and the jewelry that she makes and the hats. She, she just, she's all that and, and a bag of chips. Um, also, <laughs> I know I had a couple of questions that people asked that they wanted me to bring up. And, and I know we run it out of time, but people always want to know, well, why do you shave your hair? Won't it come back? And I think Jordan answered that. If we get a little bit, you know, too much growth, it's it's gonna become ingrown hair. It's gonna it's gonna hurt, and not just in our heads. You know, um, I have not been able to wear eyeliner, mascara, or eyelashes since June because I got a sty that was the result of an ingrown eyelash. Even the optometrist came at me with tweezers, talking about let me pull that out, and I'm like, oh Lord Jesus. So. The alopecia affects us in different parts of our bodies, not just our scalp. Um, we, we're not even going to talk about legs and arms and stuff, but we have this beauty bazaar so that we can share all this information so that we can share uh, the love. I know a couple of years ago, we, we had the beauty bazaar and a woman walked in with a couple of her friends and she was in tears. Yeah. She was in tears. I had to go grab Jordan and the rest of the models and say, let's just cover this woman like, like you do at church when somebody's slain, just, just surround them. She was so happy to see other people that looked like her, that I, she just cried the whole time. So this is the fifth year that we have gathered together. Last year, we did not have the beauty bazaar, but we continue to have the weekend retreat. So it happens this year, September 16th through the 19th, uh, Thursday through Sunday. On Thursday, what do we do? We're going to have some s'mores on the beach side. We're going to have some whole milk to drink. Also some bubblies and uh, we're going to put our feet in the sand and some, listen to some smooth jazz. Yeah. Last, year, last year, a woman came and she had just shaved for the first time. And she said, there's this thing at the beach. I want to go. And she brought her adult children. And we had a wonderful time with her, a wonderful time. So then that's Thursday night. Friday morning, we, we get up. Um, we're staying at the Akutiki Resort in Daytona this year. Uh, we're going to get up Friday morning and have beachside support group. We're all going to talk. We're going to do some selfies on the beach. Um, we're going to be together. We're going to have a couple of real quick um, workshops. We've real got, quick. We've got somebody that's going to do a spa party on the beach. We've got somebody that's going to talk about her book and, and uh, some of her <laughs> life journeys. Uh, but we don't want to take up a lot of time because yeah. we want you to enjoy the beach. You you Coming to Daytona, we want you to enjoy the beach. Because at 4 o'clock, you got to meet us in the lobby of the resort because... A limousine will take us down to the boat, and we're going to get on the boat. We're going to eat some, I don't know, shrimp, whatever your choice is. Prime there. rib. Yeah, yeah, four choices. And we're going to cruise down the Halifax River for about, two I guess, hours. two hours. Yes. And return. For those of you who have never been down the Halifax River, but that's the all, that's the all white party. That's when we get all dressed up and all of us just bum rush the boat. And the folks is looking like, what's all these, what, what, what? And so that allows us to share alopecia awareness. 
because they, you know, with two or more gathered, some folks got to ask questions. So they start asking and we start answering. And um, then Saturday morning, we, we get up and we go to um, the Museum of Arts and Sciences in Daytona Beach. That's where we have the, the Beauty Bazaar, uh, live entertainment presented by Barty and Company. We've got about uh, 17 registered vendors so far. We only got room for 20, but we got about 17 registered vendors. You can shop, you can learn about um, health and, and fashion and wellness and, and just really network. And it's in a huge venue. It's in a huge venue. We're asking everybody to wear their masks. All the vendors will have uh, hand sanitizer and it's going, we've got some food vendors. It's going to be a good time. And then Sunday morning, we get up, have sunrise service on the beach. And then we check out of the resort and head somewhere to go eat. <laughs> yeah. So for those of you who uh, live in the Atlanta area, we have one of those famous, uh, I guess you would call What's Miss called? Ruby coming. Miss Ruby. Anybody famous, know Miss Ruby? It's it's uh. Oh yeah. Oh, you gotta be there. You gotta be there. <laughs> Florida's version of Medea. Yeah. Coming. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta be there. I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. Yeah. A mess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And also, <laughs> yeah. 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 So go to bowbeautifulandbald.com. I'll put it in the chat. There you'll see the uh, highlight video from two years ago. You'll see Jordan all dressed up. You'll see Tam looking fabulous. Lord Jesus, she looks so good in that blue gown. And um, I, I'm excited because we've got Stacy that's trying to come. Uh, I already said Lavonda's going to pop in and make an appearance. And uh, I, I don't think I would have any of you beautiful people in my life if it wasn't for alopecia. That's the thing that I love about that's, alopecia. That's the key. Man, you see another baldy and you be running her down. You know, hey girl, how you doing? <laughs> Call me, let's talk. You know, yeah. we, we even got, uh, what is that we doing in the support group now? A baldy buddy. If you want to go to the movies and you don't want to be by yourself, call yeah. a sister. You yeah. know, I mean, yeah. that, that that's it. That's it right there. That's it right there. So I don't know about alcoholics or folks, you know, dialysis. I don't know about none of them, but I love having my baldy buddies. <laughs> support is real. All right. Give yes. us the dates again so that it'll be on record. One more September time. 16th through the 19th. <clears throat> if you come in for the weekend, you get your uh, get your hotel reservation at the Akutiki. Ask for the Angie B retreat rate. Uh, that information is going to be on Facebook.com. Uh, Bold, beautiful, and bald beauty bazaar. You'll see the little the little card that looks like this. I got to give a shout out to the heartwarming project. They gave us an action grant this year to help us spread alopecia awareness. So their information is up there. They helped us um, cover the cost. The Beauty Bazaar is a fundraiser for the National Alopecia Areata Foundation. Yes, we do need sponsors. Barty is retired. He don't mind chipping in two, three dollars. But when I start talking about two, five, three, uh, six dollars, he, he yeah. looking at me some kind yeah. of way. Like, yeah. you won't have to put on a wig if this is getting too expensive, okay? <laughs> Let me buy you a hat or something. So uh, we, we take care of the venue, we take care, but you know, we can't spend all the money because some of the money's got to go to the, the, the Alopecia Foundation. So if anybody knows anybody in Jacksonville, we've got a, a, a sponsor coming in, y'all, the models. Uh, we've got the uh, fashion designer that's coming in from Houston. She's flying into Jacksonville on Friday at 4 p.m. We on the dinner boat cruise, so we can't go pick her up. So I'm looking at Uber, it's gonna be a hundred something dollars. And I'm like, Lord help, we need a sponsor. So um, I'm just I'm just letting y'all know, we don't do this to, to pay the bills. We ain't making no money. I'm spending money. That's why I do audiobooks to help pay the bills. So uh, if, if y'all want to help, uh, we the $10 admission ticket for the day, for the 18th um, is available. Even if you know somebody that ain't coming, ask them to buy a ticket. That's another ten dollars we could send to the foundation. Right, exactly. Okay. So contact any of the vendors that you see on the website, boldbeautifulandbald.com. Uh, make a donation to them. Uh, make a donation directly to us. Make a donation directly to naaf.org. Um, last year, the audiobook series donated money to the Baldy Movement. 
uh, Nellie Nell Coleman, we made that donation. And Bald Life Magazine has been extremely supportive. They uh, sent us information while we were out on tour and they ran an ad. And I really encourage each of you to get a subscription to Triumphant Magazine. Yeah, yes. Last year, Triumphant did an article every month yeah, about yeah. Um, something about alopecia awareness. She's always there every year. And um, there's going to be a special uh, September edition coming out from Triumphant Magazine. Jordan's going to be featured in it, a couple of others. So search for Triumphant Magazine on Facebook, order a subscription and, and share it with somebody. Again, we all know somebody walking around looking like Stevie Wonder that just need to, you know, yeah. they, need, they need to, you know, it's good that it's growing long, but I mean, you know, they, and what about this man that, that looked like ZZ Top that came and approached me today? Just- Oh, not me, y'all. <laughs> he was looking. I don't know why he came over oh here. Oh my God. I don't know. I, I don't know. I wanted to reach a magazine and smack them with it, but instead we gave them a card and we gave them a magazine. So let's continue to inform people with some of the, the things that we have that are printed and Triumphant Magazine can definitely do that. Now, when you come in, if you come in as a vendor, you get 10 free tickets and mm -hmm. that you could do with whatever you whatever like. You want. You want to sell them, yeah. yeah. You want to give them to your friends. Yeah. So hopefully, uh, yeah. if you know someone that uh, want to come in as a vendor, uh, the cost you can recoup by right. selling the tickets or giving them to your friends. Right, right, right. And I just want to go out there. If you have um, any auction items, you can donate. Um, that's something that we did the other year when we had the bazaar, um, and it, it helped raise money. I mean, I was fortunate to have a vacation I wasn't planning on using, and I donated it, and it sold really good for the cause of, of the National Alopecia Areata Foundation. Mm -hmm. and everything that Barty and, and Angie do behind the scenes. So you, donations towards the auction is something that yeah. you can do as well. Yeah. Talents, gifts, money, yeah. it all works. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, Donna, Angie, thank, the, you. thank you. The $75 is for the weekend? It's for the weekend. That includes the s'mores, the dinner boat okay. cruise, the Friday morning, the Saturday, it includes everything. Okay, mm -hmm. and, then, and then you just make the reservation at the hotel. And okay. ask for the that's yep. separate under your name. Right. Under your yeah. right. Okay. Ask for the NGB retreat rate. Yep. Yep. Okay. Now, if anybody knows any <laughs> members of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority or Phi Beta Sigma fraternity, please uh, give them my number. We want them to show up in, in their blues because our color is royal blue. And it just it it would just look and, and we met a woman who said, I know some AKAs that's got alopecia. They may not know they got it, but we know they got it. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> um, please, y'all, invite uh, fraternities, sororities, um, uh, women's groups. And yes, this is a family-friendly affair. So bring your children. Because children always looking at me yeah. like, ooh. And, and, and like the other women said, like Stacy said, I don't believe they see the lack of hair. They see the love and the beauty in us. And, you know, we, we gotta, we gotta continue to encourage. Okay, ladies, we are going to wrap this up. Thank you, Angie B and Barty. The question is, if you have a business, let us know what it is and what your pearl of wisdom you would like to leave with everybody this evening. LaVonda, we're going to start with you. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> Um, Vonda's Handmade Vita Boutique. I Put it in the chat room, please. I sure will. Mm -hmm. I um, make handmade jewelry. I've been doing it for years. And I just love it. It's just, it was a pastime. At first, it started out as a, a little thing to do, but then it just amounted into, into to something big. So I just continue to do it. And my pearls of wisdom. Uh, let's see, really quick. Uh, what I said the pageant real quick. Oh, um, if don't let anyone steal your joy. Get up, go forward, knock on that door, knock, 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 and say, hey, the joy that you stole belongs to me. Mm -hmm. Get your joy back, step back, and stand in your peace. And just live. 
Thank you, Lavanda. Thank you very much. Stacy. Yes, um, I'm going to put in the chat. Uh, I would like for everyone, if you can, whoever is on Facebook and IG, follow the Alopecia Queen movement. Um, and as well as every Tuesday, um, for those that um, have the Clubhouse app, which is a social media audio app, um, in which I host a room every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. And it's just, um, and LaDuana has been on it a couple of times. It's just, it's, it's hard to explain what it is. It's, it's pretty much women that are sharing their alopecia stories similar to this, but it's different when you hear it, um, the heart, you know, it's one thing to see it, but when you actually hear it and able to connect in that way, it's just amazing. So I'll put that in, in the chat. Um, and I'm also a, a, an ordained minister and licensed chaplain. And with that, I correlate the two and I offer uh, free mentoring for women that have alopecia. Um, and so they call and we just talk and share and just encourage them. And so I added that piece to the movement as well. Um, for words of encouragement, um, I would say just one phrase, it's beyond the bald. And that means it's just, if we can just get over, and I don't mean this in an, in an insecure way or in an inconsiderate way or insensitive way rather, it's when we see over that it's more than just us being bald and how embracing that actually is like a bridge that leads us to our true purpose and what that means. Um, and it's interesting how it has to take us losing something to gain something more that has been hidden underneath the surface. So it's beyond the bald. Thank you, Stacy. Tam. So um, I put my information there in the chat. Um, okay, thank more, you. Um, I'm a project manager, um, program manager. I work with mental health, behavioral health, substance abuse providers throughout the country. Um, once more, they outsource different projects and tasks, and it could be little things like getting a credential into an insurance panel to helping them actually build a program, you know, design it out from policies, procedures, and everything else in between. Um, I, one of my words, uh, gosh, I have so many, but um, self-actualization is a word that I, I knew, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, swift, but until I actually decided to walk in my truth on my my journey um i really didn't know what that word meant you know and so when i tell folks take some time if you gotta look it up you know what i mean find out what the synonyms are <laughs> you know what i mean learn it and and live it and so just just come to the level of self actualization and that's my pearls of wisdom there thank you tam angela <laughs> You are mute. Sorry about that. All right. So the first uh, question was about the wisdom. Do you have a business? Do you have a business? I, I, yes, I do. I put it in the chat. Okay. Um, I am Creative Soul. I am on Facebook and Instagram, and I have a website as well. I also uh, create um, jewelry, basically mainly earrings. Um, I kind of turned my own passion into others' fashions. So I um, I love creating. And I love quirky, crazy, loud, bright, whatever. The weirder it is, the more I love it. And there are some people out there just like me. So um, my jewelry is not, you know, the norm of jewelry. I'm a very out of the box when it comes to uh, colors and designs and stuff. So... And um, my words of wisdom I would like to leave. Um, as I was um, just kind of been going through um, with the it is what it is, the whole acceptance. I normally, when I, when I pray for people a lot, I pray for a lot of women for courage, mm -hmm. um, not just in the area of um, transitioning from having hair to, you know, being bald, but just in life in general. And um, the serenity prayer, um, came to me as I was, you know, getting prepared for this. Just God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. And we all know when the hair loss comes, this, you know, we can't change that, you know, and just give me the courage to change the things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Um, a lot of times, um, you know, we, we 
allow situations. I tell people all the time, life happens. Life happens. I don't care who you are, as long as you on this earth, life is going to happen. So when life happens to you, whatever it is, just have the courage to make the right decisions and that wisdom and stuff come through prayer. You know, you pray and you seek God on which direction with everything. He said we ought to acknowledge him in all our ways and he will direct our path. Even in our hair loss journeys, we have to, you know, seek God concerning it. And then we got to have peace about it. We got to have peace about, you know, every decision and situation. And I know I've been guilty of going back and forth with the decision. Should I wear the wig? Should I wear the weave? Should I rock my bald head? You know, I've been there. But mm. it had to come a point where I had to have peace and God gave me the courage to walk in that peace. And when I, when I walked in it, I felt a burden lifted off my shoulders. And when I walk, I, I, I feel my confidence and, and, and people feel it. And they see it when I enter a room, you know, people always tell me, oh, you just sway when you walk and you just walk with your head here and confident because I'm at peace and I know who I am. And I know whose I am. So um, that's the wisdom that I would like to leave. Okay. Thank you so much, Jordan. <clears throat> okay. So I have the uh, Central Florida Alopecia uh, Support Group. And with that, we, we will be meeting uh, on August the 28th virtually. I'm going to put that out there. Also put it in the chat box. And uh, my words of wisdom is God makes no mistake. We were chosen for, we were chosen for a reason. Uh, this could not have happened to, it couldn't have happened to anybody else. And I've, I've seen a slogan somewhere that says alopecia is not for the weak. Believe that. We we're all chosen uh, for this journey. And uh, I'm so happy that we're able to link together and let's keep walking strong um, in this journey. He makes no mistakes. Thank you, Jordan. Hortense, yeah. You have anything um, to say? Yeah, a couple of things. One, okay. I read your book, Donna, because I met you about 20 something years ago, I guess it was. And it was a great book. So I wanted to. Not for the faint at heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was really good. And um, uh, Ms. Jordan, thank you for bringing me part of this group. Like um, Ms. B said, she ran me down and gave me a card and said, you need to belong to this group meeting her at an event. So that, that was really good. And um, you know, I wrote my book because people see your glory. They don't know your story right. and we all have a story. And that's why I entitled my book that way because um, there's a lot of stories. A lot. To tell. Yes, yes. And then I make, I'm from Aruba. So I make an Arubian iced tea hmm. that, um, that I sell. Um, so I'm working on, on doing that. I've been doing that for years. And in um, the interest of time, my word of wisdom, nothing can dim the light that shines from within. Mm. Mm. And with that, I Thank say, you. bless you all. I got a, a meeting at 945. I've got to meet with someone. So okay. thank you all so much. It's been Thank great. You. And Angie, I, I'm going to get my ticket and I'm going to try to get my daughters to come too because I, I think that's going to be my birthday. <laughs> Thanks, Hortensia. Thanks. Angie? Barty? I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let On Barty. behalf of Angie B and Barty Productions, mm -hmm. we're getting over the hump every Wednesday night, 7 o'clock to 7.30. Or 8. <laughs> or, uh, whenever we get off, we get off. our Pearl of Wisdom thought is we don't give advice. We just say, stay prayed up. Stay afraid of. And thank you all for being here this evening. It's been wonderful. I've learned so, so, so much. And I, my pearl of wisdom is remember when you have a crack, it also shows light through. So good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you for I'm having me so much. I'm going to shake my head. So I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Ooh, this the is magic a challenge. The magic good night, everybody. Pray for me. Pray for me. Nice Happy to meet everyone. Happy birthday. Congratulations again, girl. Good night. Good night, everybody. Congratulations. Thank I'll you. I'll stay with yeah. you. I'll come back to hug you in person, honey. Can't good wait. Real. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.